it's my birthday and look where we are we're not in a marina anymore you might notice that here we have a loo with a view we've got this um, shower curtain which pulls across on a track all the way around so if you do need some privacy you've got that and it actually um comes back and is and held in place lotions in it lotions the clock has been ticking at a ferocious pace all week to get to this point and man it was worth it this is brilliant too a kelly peterson 44 built in 1978 this is us the smallwoods and this is the story of our long overdue boat refit welcome along for the ride Well, it is Sunday, the 19th of September, 2021. It's my birthday. And look where we are. We're not in a marina anymore. And I'm gonna pass the camera to Julian so he can do a pan around and show you the beautiful view. We're in Sid Harbour on Whitsunday Island. And the sun is just about to come up over there. It's a little bit chilly. Bit of a southeasterly breeze. My friends Wes and Mark and Tanya and kids are on their boat over there. We had a few beers with them last night and a bite to eat. And then um, came home to our new boat. A new old boat. Our new old boat. I fell into a deep unconscious state. Well, I tell you what, it's been a bit of a process to, uh, to get here. This week has been... Man, the last week. two days, oh, especially the biggest push to um, to get the boat mobile again. So of course she's not finished. There's a lot more work to do, um, but this is the first time we've been able to use the boat since um, it was the 30th of November, the morning of the 30th of November, when we pulled into Port of Airly, and we haven't moved the boat since she basically became immobile and uh, now we're at the point where even though we're still refitting finally we've we can use her again we've got her back so that's amazing i think we worked out what was it nine months 18 days <laughs> you wrote it down in the logbook i don't know 20 hours and and 15 minutes 20 minutes or something that's how long it was between us uh well we felt like landlubbers it's just that's wrong the mooring lines actually took a fair bit of effort to to get off the cleats they actually were they talk about you know chaining yourself to the dock it took a while to get the get the uh, lines loose they were so tight on there with all the, the wind and snubbing and everything through summer and, yeah. anyway um we we did do a little bit of filming yesterday but i tell you what the couple of days before that it was just so frantic that we didn't actually film uh, an awful lot of what was was going on it was just there was a lot of tidying up which might have been a bit boring anyway i mean it was fairly dramatic in the end um we basically uh we started in the v-birth which had previously been just a storage shed and uh got everything clear in the saloon finally so we could unpack the, the crates to the best of our ability i'll give you a little bit of a walk through down below um in a, in a little lighter. bit so when it gets lighter so you can see um what things are like down there but you know we're, we're kind of camping a bit we haven't got doors on full stop it's open plan it's open plan yeah <laughs> there's no doors on there's no locker doors on because we just didn't want to be putting things on that weren't quite finished and we'd have to take off again it's just you know two once yeah one step forward for three back there's just there's just no point so we're just live with it like it is uh for the moment we were able to get the drawers back in which i think we did film um so that meant we could unpack food stuff and a little bit of galley stuff um we were then able to get into the aft cabin which was another storage, storage. shed um where the door had been taped shut at one point and it was absolutely disgusting that it was you know through an australian summer as oh. well the manky old headliner was just covered in mold i was through the bedding and cushions oh 
pillows away. It was just, it was feral. Anyway, that was all uh, completely cleaned up. I was up to my eyes in bleach and clove oil and all sorts of things. And we got a bed again, which was nice. So um, all of us have got bunks. Joshie's asleep in his at the moment. And yeah, then we got our cushions on board for the first time ever. So they're, they're brand new. Uh, Mark from Elite Marine Trimming did those. And we put food in the fridges and pilot berth went back in. And then finally we started that engine and got away from the dock. So the clock has been ticking at a ferocious pace all week to get to this point. And man, it was worth it. I just have been dreaming of sitting here in the cockpit on a morning like this, bobbing around on the water, and here we are. And the sun's just popped over the hill. This might be as good a time as any to uh, take you on a tea break tour through where we're up to with the boat below deck. So obviously uh, starting at the front this is um, the V-Birth or Joshi's cabin. It was a storage shed for a long time while we were working out there but part of what we had to do to get mobile again was unpack everything that was in here and somehow get it away. All the crates have gone, it was all cleaned up. The drawers and this door have gone back on. There's a cupboard, a locker door around here that you can't actually see and this locker door here that you can see. They're not on because there's still work to do inside these lockers. So this has to be relined. There's headliner that's old headliner that's got to come off. We've got to put new headlining on. This side here will be replaced just like this this other end of it has been um, done. Uh, that was done because power points had to go in um, and so it's just done with the wet area lama panel which is easy to clean. The other side will be done with the same stuff. So there was no point in putting a locker door on when we were only going to have to take it back off again. So that's why they're not done. But these drawers which have been sitting in our shed at home because they were all um, varnished, they're all back on. It's a bit stiff there. There we go. Million toy cars, a few toy soldiers. Um, this one does need a bit of work here. Didn't quite go back on as planned, but anyway, that's that's all all pretty good. Now moving on, um, you might notice that here we have a loo with a view. So we don't have the doors back on in here. Um, and that's because the doors need some work. We've actually put some mirrors onto the backs of them and 
for some reason we didn't think to tell the glass people that weight was an issue and to use the thinnest glass possible or the thinnest mirror possible so they're really super heavy which means that we've actually got to beef up the um the door hardware so that they're safe to put back on we've got some work to do there so again there wasn't time to do it uh, before we came out uh, we were just on a deadline for the school holidays so lure the view it is we've got this um, shower curtain which pulls across on a track all the way around so if you do need some privacy you've got that and it actually um, comes back and is and held in place in it. Lotions. it comes back and is held in place with a little uh, custom made strap here there's just a little a little clip there which unclips when you want to use it and then just put that back in voila moving into the saloon so again as you can see um no locker door on here no locker doors on all of it we still actually need to access through some of these um, lockers because we've still got a little bit of uh, re-bedding work to do on the deck then what that means is we'll be able to um build rebuild the lockers themselves put the backs in new backs as has been done actually over here you can see one there did have to have its its new back in it already again that was to do with a powerpoint going in and just really needing to have that um sort of mocked up and in place um so eventually all of them will look like that but the sides will all be done as well and the shelves will go back in and then the doors will be able to to go back in but in the meantime again all open plan one thing we were able to do finally was get the pilot berth back on which is this here that actually does slide out when we're at sea we've got some hooks that have to go in here we need to get a new lee cloth made lee cloth is what holds you in place when the boat's healing and and um so you can sleep here it's a it's a good place to sleep when you're working through a watch system we could put these drawers back in these were all lined relined we covered the floor with some plastic just to protect the work that we uh, we didn't because we've still got a lot more work to do. One of the things we've still got to do is the headlining. That's going to be one of the next projects, um, which we'll talk through once we're actually doing it. Our cushions are finally in. So this upholstery was done last year and um, I think it was kind of the thing that really prompted the whole refit in the first place because we had new upholstery done after our cats had kindly torn it apart for us and yeah. I said I, I am not putting that back in the boat the way it is so anyway here we are all these many many months later there's a piece of teak trim that runs all the way along here that matches that that's got to be remade that's another story eventually our table will go back in here this is a freezer um, we're, it's not going to live here permanently but for now while we're sort of just camping through this period it's here um, these cutaways here there's another one behind on the other side of the boat they'll be relined but for now we were just able to throw things in there and that's given us the capacity to to come out for this school holiday period this is obviously the um, nav station and uh, the refurbishment of this really started with replacing the old uh, electrical panel um, that was here which is made in 1978 and we ordered these two nice uh, 12 volt panels from uh, Blue Sea Systems. The idea of getting the electricians in here to do this job was uh, let's just put let's just make these panels like nice brand new panels so once they uh, started working on it it became a bigger and bigger project and uh, it's the same door, we just changed the panel, we've used black perspex in here and, and in there. And now we can open the door and it looks like a properly made professional electrical panel. Very Instead nice. of a and rat's nest, a spaghetti of wiring, which is what it was. It was, this This was just full of, full of wiring and all just um, all over the place. And uh, so now that's all been neatened up, we've got all brand new um, wiring loom and everything in there and uh, that's been a vast improvement. This is the 240 panel um, that's been upgraded from uh, 110 volt to 240 volt right throughout the boat. All the 240 volt wiring is new 
and um, that's another panel we got from Blue Sea Systems and um, here's some of the 240 power points we've uh, we've got over 40 actual power outlets now in the boat which uh, we've been using plenty of them it's not quite finished they've still got a few bits and pieces to do but uh, we're very happy this is original this shelf and uh, th this area here is something we reclaimed. This desk used to run back another five inches in there. What Michael's suggestion was that we put a panel in here to keep the 240, the AC side, separate from the 12 volt side, which is proper electrical practice. So we started off, we put this uh, panel in, which is um, uh, matte, matte black perspex laminated onto uh, plywood. I think it's 3 eighths of an inch plywood. And then that panel's just screwed in and um, the, the 240 volt wiring is safely away from any prying fingers or whatever. You have to actually unscrew this panel. You can see it's not quite finished, but the, we applied the same tr treatment in, in here as we apply, as we put in everywhere else. It's the uh, imitation teak laminex. We've retained all the, the timber trims and um, sanded and varnished them. Same, same all around here. So obviously that isn't the finished product and there's a door still there's a door missing just there in the galley we've done the same treatment sanding all the teak we've been through all that and uh putting putting the laminex on wherever the teak veneer was there's still some work to do here we've put the sliding doors back in not the same ones that came out but we're going to make new ones with uh with some nice finger pulls in them and stuff like that it's going to it's going to look really good um down here this was our 110 volt area there was a panel here with switches for microwave um, and um, water heater and stuff and then there were breakers here for what used to be a 110 volt uh, anchor winch believe it or not and 110 volt um, water maker there was 110 volt refrigeration and there was a massive wiring in behind here so what the boys did was rip out all the obsolete wiring we've put in a 240 volt outlet there um, and we've installed three 12 volt outlets. What we've got in here, but, it, but it's, not, um, it's, it's not hooked up yet, is our engine room alarm systems. This was quite an ugly uh, panel and we've just, we've just replaced that with a white lamina panel. Going back in here is uh, quite a major um, project was putting a stainless steel um, cupboard in here or area for uh, the microwave to go in. We basically kept the carcass, the plywood carcass, and we had all these uh, bits of um, brushed stainless, I think it's one millimeter or 0.9 millimeter brushed stainless uh, sheet bent up by Alec at Airly Welding. And um, he also cut all the all the uh, stainless steel sheets. I, I made patterns to fit every everything just like I did with the laminex. Gave them to the fabricators and they just sent all the sheeting back. We've still got our drawer back, back here that we had originally. But now instead of it being plywood in there, it's stainless steel. The stove's gone back in its, in its old spot. And if we tilt it back, you can see the stainless all the stainless sheet going in there. It's a good result all round and all went together uh, very well. In the mad week that we had leading up to uh, actually getting off the dock on Saturday, there were still two pieces of that that weren't done. That front return there that goes above the, the top of the micro yeah. microwave. There needed to be another one at the back um, so that it's held in place when the boat heals. Mm. Um, there's obviously a lip on the bottom which um, the feet butt up against so it can't come out on the bottom but we were needing to make sure that it stayed firmly in place. So we had we designed this system and so that, that back lip wasn't done. And also the there's a stainless plate that needs to go into as the sort like of a ceiling. Stainless like a, really, like a stainless headliner. Um, and that wasn't done either and we had to go back to Alec and say alright we've got these final two pieces I know you're really busy but do you think you could make them and do you think you could make them like now like and again morning. yeah no no problem they just um, yeah straight straight away and we were able to it was literally what was it like three o'clock in the afternoon well, or something I we was, were putting that in and I we're... was putting these bits in while Shaz was packing our clothes at home
We've mentioned those guys in a in a, a previous video because they did all the stainless work in the um, in the the cockpit and on deck, etc. But this is part of what they helped us do as well. And yeah, fabulous job, really great. The Hobbit hole. We had to get a um, a new charger inverter. We were going to get the 2000 watt um, inverter charger, but the 2000 watt was really tall. And um, then I happened to see on someone else's vlog um, this compact version, um, which was 3000 watts and 120 amp hour um, shore power charger. I thought, well, we'll just get that. It fits, fits much better. It's a bit deeper this way, but it's a lot more versatile. And so the boys put that in and um, what went along with that was they said, oh, well, all your battery cables are um, too thin now. So we had to get all new, <laughs> all new um, battery cables. This is a solar controller for our three, um, our three 250 watt panels that we've got over the, over the top of the davits. These are the old solar controllers for our solar panels that are on the rails. We've got new battery selectors here. The boys have simplified the system. If the engine batteries go flat for whatever reason, there's just a bridge setting here. And then we've got all the power, all the power going to start the engine. Here's our RCD up here. We never had an RCD either. Residual current device, um, stops you getting electrocuted. And we put a power point in here to replace the old 110 volt power point. And the cupboard obviously still needs to be rebuilt. That's this um, this white uh, wet area lamma panel here is the only side part that's been done just so that all that stuff could get mounted on it. So now it's, it's functional again and we're able to use these things, which is great. So we're in the aft cabin. This is where our battery bank is for quite a few years up until now. Um, we had 450 amp hour batteries in here and we had two under the bed um, down in there and um, Michael um, got us to move the uh, bat two batteries into here and we've just managed to fit them in so we've now got six um, 150 amp hour batteries in here. This is our house bank, so we've got 900 amp hours here. We've got a 300 amp hour starter bank as well, but they're under the floor in the galley. This in here, this locker hasn't been done yet. We've still got the headliner out. We're gonna do that, but uh, they've run the wires for the lighting just so that we can sort of use it jury rig it. This is the back of where the battery selectors are and the inverter, etc. So the cabling just comes through the bulkhead and um, I'm going to put a, another another lamid panel panel in here, which will just um, which will just shut this locker like off. Like a false side sort of thing. Yeah, shut the wiring off. This is the aft cabin, which of course has been firmly taped shut through the whole um, exercise and just reminds us of why we started doing this in the first place. There's all this you know, delaminating veneer here and just, yeah, it's, uh, this is the mess that we started out with and the pub ceiling, um, uh, headliner, etc. But, uh, anyway, we've got a nice boat taking shape forward of here, which is all that counts. Mm -hmm.